Hello, this is Ness Tilson here. Um, this is a short video to show how to set up uh, furniture in alcoves. Well, this method can be used um, for alcoves or any fitted furniture, furniture or cabinets that have to go between walls. Um, the idea here is that we're using, going to use the project mode and we're going to use a special technique to set up the walls in the project mode and then apply the cabinets to it. So how do we go about this? This is a, this is a, some, a sort of a simple project that I've set up with some sculptured doors and we've just got a cabinet, a lower cabinet in the alcove and some just the shelves which are just fixed onto the wall above. How do I go about setting a project like this? Well, let's go in starting a new project and I'll show you exactly how it's done. Let's quit this project. I'll just save it to disk and we'll get rid of it. And here are the project. But let's start this project completely from the start and see what we can do. Let's go close this. Okay, so let's imagine that we have, I've set up in SketchUp a little demonstration uh, alcove so that I can show you exactly what it looks like in 3D um, with a sort of central fireplace, two alcoves either side, it's a very sort of classical uh, situation if you need to add shelves in the alcoves here. So how do I set this up in Polyboard? Well, Imagine that I haven't done it in SketchUp at all, and this is just a quick sketch for dimensions. And let's set something up in Polyboard. So, okay, I go over to Polyboard. Let's um, set up a new project to start with. I'll click right in the project window and add a new rectangular floor. And let's just add by default a surface, which I'll zoom now to see all the surface. This is just a big floor. What I want to do is to set up, let's get onto the screen, the SketchUp drawing as well. I want to set up, set up the walls with the alcoves and something to represent the fireplace in the middle here in Polyboard. So how do I do that? Well, the easiest way to do that is to use Polyboard cabinet models and as templates. How do I do that? Well, look, I click right into the model list and I add a new model. I don't care what the sizes are to start with, it's just called model. And I drag one of these models onto the onto the floor. Um, this model now, I'm going to give this model, it is parametric, it's a cabinet, I'm going to give this model the size of the alcove. So I'll have 132, 1320 mil by 350 mil. So I click here and I'm going to give it 1320 mil by 350 mil. Now I have a model which represents this particular alcove here. Now I'm going to add another model to this and I want to I want to represent this this chimney stack which is sticking out, chimney place which is sticking out. Uh, at the same distance 350 but the length is 1409 so I'll take another model and I'll just clip it onto this one it's got the right depth now but the, the width will be 1409 I'll enter that new length and I'll create a new model and call it 1409 now this one is now 1409 I'll grab another model and clip it onto this one but this particular model will have the length of 1445 in the second alcove. I'll go 1445. And the new model, I'll create a new model, 1445. Now we have just mock cabinets which we can use to build our alcove. Let's go back into full screen mode. So let's go into the project mode and I'll click right and choose in the menu new wall. Now let's set up the wall. The thickness of the wall, let's put the wall as 100 millimeters thick. We'll position it on the outer side of the lines that we're going to draw. And we'll, cl we'll click it at zero millimeters on the floor. And the height will be the height of the wall in the room. So let's put two meters 70. 
let's give it a texture so we don't want it transparent and let's give it some texture here if I click here and I can choose a texture in my texture library for instance something like this and now we'll be able to draw our, our, our walls um, bef the wall let's click a wall here click it onto here and I, look at the wall will snap automatically onto the end of the cabinets and if you can see that I'm actually drawing the wall you can see how it's building itself up here I'm actually drawing a wall on the left hand side as I as I draw I can make maybe, maybe draw a bit further here like this um, no let's get rid of that point because I don't really want that point and let's just quit edition here and I have now a wall uh, the flooring I think is a bit thick I think I forgot to change the thickness let's change the flooring to just 20 mil thick and that'll be okay so what does that give me if I look in my project 3d mode we have now the walls with the alcoves and our mock cabinets here let's get rid of the mock cabinets so I just have to click here and sub, sub, um, delete and I just delete here and now our cabinets are gone but we still have the walls let's change a bit the um, size of the uh, flooring this is because I'm going to change the size of flooring because the, the flooring I'm just going to make it go round my walls because the poly board I'm going to use dimensions in a minute and I would like my dimensions just to be outside the total area of the model the flooring we can get maybe get a bit a bit more flooring in front just adjusting the flooring here using the grid snap okay right now what I would like to do if I look into SketchUp let's have a go back into SketchUp and have a look what we have here I'd like to set up the fireplace in front here so I don't really care we have specific dimensions here we have one meter fifty high and specific dimensions for the fireplace but let's not bother too much about that it's not part of the project as we only want to build cabinets here so let's just go straight into um, into polyboard and just quickly set up a mock fireplace just for the sake of presentation how do I do that well let's go let's say well I keep this I, I see that I see that it sticks out approximately fireplace by about 200 mil and let's go straight into the project mode here and set up a fireplace well how do I set up a fireplace here well I'm going to just draw a wall the wall I'm going to click it using the grid snap approximately here and say approximately here the thickness of this wall I'm going to give it something quite deep um, sorry thickness of this wall I'm going to give it something like um, 200 sorry 200 mil I'm going to click it onto the inner side now so the wall will be clipped this side here it's 200 millimeters thick and let's give it another texture so it doesn't look like the other the wall behind it let's give it a sort of a marble texture maybe something like this that's what we've got here marble let's take a marble and we don't want the height the height of the wall we just want the height of this particular bit of walling the height of the fireplace here we can see the height of the fireplace let's click OK and see what it gives okay well the texture I don't like this texture very much we can reorganize this texture let's go back into the project mode click here take another texture and let's take something a bit more discreet uh, we can change maybe the sizes uh, let's change the, the the density of the texture and take it down to 50 and see what that gives okay so we have now a sort of stone fireplace now let's draw now let's hollow out this fireplace to actually give the um, the half of the fire how do we do that well in the project mode again I will click add a new wall again let's go into the project mode here now it's the same thing I don't really care where it is 
because it's only a matter of quick representation. I'm going to draw a new wall and this time I'm going to click the wall approximately the position that I want the hole. I'm going to give the wall this time a thickness which goes through the hole which will be thicker than all the other walls, so for instance 800. I'm going to give it an elevation so that there's a little, um, so the hole, this wall is actually going to be a hole. I'm going to give you an elevation of 100 millimeters from the ground and I'm going to give it a total height of 101 meter 20. And to make this not a wall but a hole, I'm going to get transparency of 100 millimeters. Of course, here it absolutely, the texture has got no importance because it's completely transparent. If I click OK and now I look at 3D, we have the half. So this is, this is okay, this is good representation now of our fireplace. I see that the flooring, I haven't given it the right texture. Let's give a good texturing to the floor. First of all, we'll get rid of the transparency and give it zero. Let's give, um, give a texture, let's give a wooden floor. So if I can get to textures, let's give, um, where we've got some textures and let's take a wooden floor as a texture, a deck flooring. Uh, let's give it a, a fairly wide area of 800 mil and let's respect respecting scaling and let's see what this gives us now. Oh here we have it now. We have nice texture floor, texture wall boarding, pine boarding on the floor. We've got a motif, got a sort of um, wallpaper motif on the walls, and the fireplace is in stone, which is quite good. Uh, you could, if you're using this poly board here to build a real project, you can photograph the walls with a digital camera and then add the photograph to the wall to get a very similar look to the walls for your customer. Right, this is okay for the, for the project now. Now let's set up the furniture. Furniture is very easy to set up. Let's get rid of these models that we don't need anymore. So I'll get rid of this one and this one. Okay, now we've got no more extra models. We just keep this one model here as a template which we, if we need it again. And we're going to use it in fact here to just clip into here. Right, we see that it's already the right size here because it was already sit up there but let's modify it I click twice on it and let's modify it now let's say that this particular model uh, I want a particular design and then I have set up a manufacturing method so I go into my libraries and I go to my methods material methods and I have a sculptured door cabinet here the sculptured door cabinet I'll apply this method to my to my cabinet and now the method has reorganized the materials and I've got an, a, a cabinet which corresponds to this particular manufacturing method. Let's add a plinth, 100 millimeter plinth, and I add a plinth here, a front plinth, and set it back 50 mil, for instance. And now let's set in here a couple of doors. I add a couple of doors, a double door. And let's put these double doors, built-in doors. Let's have a look at this new model that we've created. Okay, so here's our cabinet. It's not too bad. Uh, what I would quite like is for this particular top here have an overlap. So let's give a, an overlap to the top compared to the front. And let's give it an overlap of 30 mil. And that'll look better, I think. Let's save this cabinet now as a new model and let's call it a base cabinet base cab and let's say okay now we have in our project mode the base cab and the base cab is here let's have a look at it in 3d and we have the cabinet neatly fitted into our little alcove with its sculptured doors right here we have now the floor with the walls and the alcove and its cabinet. Now what we want to do is we want to take the same model 
let's take the model which is the same one here and create the shelves so let's just get rid of all the, the top and let's get rid of the back and let's get rid of the left side let's get rid of the right side and let's get rid of the top no bottom no everything get rid of everything click in the volume and add some shelves add four shelves say these four shelves let's change their material to 50 millimeter cherry click it here create a new model and we call that shelves and let's throw in our shelves let's put in our shelves above our cabinet the Z position of the shelves here, let's put it up at 90, 900 millimeters. And how does that, what does that give you in our project? Well, the shelves are a bit close together, aren't they? Because we forgot to change the actual height. So let's click into shelves. What we want is the height of our, total height of our shelves. It's not 900, which was used by default. But it be 900, 270 minus 900 millimeters. That makes one meter eighty, like this. And now, if I save this into my model and I look in my project, we have our shelves in our alcove. Okay, let's add a let's add the shelves into the other alcove here now. We add a base cabinet, but before I add my base cabinet here, let's use our measuring tool to know exactly how wide our alcove is here. Using the measuring tool I have 1445. If I right click this I can put it as a permanent dimension and we can see that the permanent dimension is displayed here so that when I quit my measuring tool my permanent dimension is here. I can now take a base cabinet add it here and change its width to 1445. I will create a new model which will be base cabinet say 1445 and we will add shelves on top of it. The shelves will put that Z position at 900 and the width will be 1445. I will create a new model and these shelves will be the shelves, I will call them shelves one four four five and if we have a look in our project mode we have our cabinets so you can see that very quickly and very easily I can set up a model which looks pretty nice very neatly and we can even improve this model with shading and different lighting effects let's see what we can give just straight without adjusting let's just give some shadows and here we have some shadows which we can organize, we can change the shadowing with the different lighting effects. If for instance I take the point light and let's put the point light up a bit and let's move it across onto the side here and right now let's get rid of the lighting and we have our a nice little image which is quite a good representation for this particular project which we've set up very quickly and of course as usual polyboards giving all the cutting lists and manufacturing files as we go and as we design so I hope that's been of interest to you and I hope to see you again in another video and I'll maybe go more into some of the finer points of um, rendering so that we can get this image looking even better. Thank you very much, goodbye and hope to be seeing you soon.